Uh, okay, good afternoon. Um, I hope I am audible to you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. So please wait. Okay, so uh, is there any doubt uh, in the discussion we had previously? So in the previous lectures, uh, we discussed about what are the applications where we can use LIDAR, okay? And uh, we have also discussed about the internal architecture of terrestrial laser scanning, okay? How it operate to, to compute a coordinate of a particular point and uh, we also discussed about the internal architecture of laser ranger okay what are the electronic components which comprise the entire operation of laser scanner so uh, if you see in case of uh, terrestrial laser scanner so uh, this uh, lidar system is mounted on a tripod okay and we perform the laser scanning uh, uh, by using tls to a static platform, okay? Uh, let's say if our aim is to map a uh, very large area, okay? So uh, by using a static operation, uh, it is not generally feasible. Like it is not time efficient way to compute a point cloud data. So what we need to do, we, we try to mount the LiDAR system on a moving platform, okay? So uh, what, what happens? like uh, what changes you need to do or what additional sensor unit you need to include with the laser scanner unit. Like if you see over here, uh, in TLS, uh, in uh, terrestrial laser scanning, you install a 3D laser scanner on a static tripod, okay? So only one sensor is there, that is uh, 3D laser scanner, okay? And it computes the raw information in terms of range and two angles. Okay, uh, if you see over here, one angle from the vertical. Okay, and you project is on a, on a horizontal plane. So another angle you need to calculate either from X axis or Y axis. So only uh, three measurements are recorded, range and two angles to calculate a coordinate of a particular point. Okay. And uh, one uh, thing you should know, like while entire operation, the internal coordinate system of laser scanner is not going to be changed. As you see over here, like this coordinate system is fixed, okay? And it is attached with the terrestrial laser scanner. What happens when you, uh, uh, you are planning to perform the entire laser scanning operation through mo mobile platform, then with respect to time, what happens? This entire system is going to move, okay? When the system is going to move, then in that case, its coordinate system is going to be changed. Like uh, for example, This is the TLS unit mounted on a tripod. Okay. 
So, and the, this is the target area where we want to perform a 3D mapping. So let's say at time T1, uh, using a timed pulse, a laser beam is fired, laser pulse. It is fired. Hit a target point P1 and return back. Okay. And so what the raw measurement we have at time T1, that is a range R1 corresponding to point P1. Then let's say we define a two angle alpha and beta, alpha from vertical while beta in the horizontal plane. Okay. So these raw information is recorded at time T1. What happened when the second laser beam is fired at time T2, uh, we provide a certain uh, displacement. Okay, we displace this uh, laser scanner to another position. So to provide a displacement, this tripod we need to remove. Okay, and we mount this system on the moving platform. Okay, so uh, what will be the problem that, that uh, I would like to discuss over here at time T2? Again, let's say it is displaced over here. Okay. The laser scanner unit is displaced over here. Now it fires a laser beam. It hits the point next to P1. Okay. And, and if we designate it P2, so for this point P2, the range R2, alpha 2, and angle beta 2, these informations are recorded. But what, uh, what change you can notice over here, this second information is recorded in a different coordinate system. Just see, when you displace it, now this is the displaced position. In this case, now you have a new coordinate system. Okay, while in the previous case, this was the coordinate system. So change in the coordinate system you can notice and changes could be in the orientation of direction of axis as well as location of origin. Similarly, like, like at time T2, this 3D scanner is mounted on a moving platform, so now it will be at, uh, at the next location, where again the measurement to which, which are recorded, they are in a different coordinate system. So what will happen? When you, you calculate, by using this raw information, when you calculate coordinate of this point P1 to Pn in a Cartesian coordinate system by, by uh, representing them in terms of x, y, and z axis projection, so those values are in a different coordinate system. So you can't form a, the, the, that information cannot uh, represent these exact surface. Because see, to, to represent a geometry of a particular object, all the points coordinates should be uh, collected in a common coordinate system. Okay. So uh, this is the challenging situation. So how we can solve this? Because see, when you are planning to operate LiDAR system through moving platform, and we have the requirement in our hand, because we have already uh, seen that by using a static uh, platform, if you want to acquire a very large area, so it is not time efficient. So uh, to solve this issue, there is a provision to mount the entire system, that, uh, that, that uh, LiDAR system on the moving platform. But this problem will occur when you mount the system on the moving platform. Okay, so uh, you can see this entire process is, uh, is uh, described uh, uh, in this view. As uh, you see over here, this tripod mounted TLS unit Okay, and uh, we have uh, selected many points from a tree. Okay, and their coordinates are first measured in TLS. 
in the terrestrial laser scanner internal coordinate system. And two points of interest we have selected P1 and P2. Okay, so using this TLS, point P1 and P2 coordinates are acquired by hitting the laser, uh, laser beam at time T1 and T2. Okay. And obviously, uh, this uh, this uh, TLS is not moving over here, so its coordinate system is fixed. That is x y g. Okay, so both point P one and P two coordinate are in x y g coordinate system. Now let's say when we mount this uh, uh, lidar system on a moving platform like a vehicle. Okay, on top of vehicle, are you integrate it with the flying aircraft? So what happens in this case? So when at time T1, the position of uh, aircraft is somewhere here. Okay. And this is an aircraft mounted LIDAR once you integrate with the aircraft. So at this position, a laser pulse is fired. Okay. And by using the return and angles which are computed, its coordinate P1 is measured. Okay. After some time, that 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 time could be the rate at which a laser pulse is fired. So there is a time difference between two successive laser beams, which uh, la laser pulse, which are fired from the laser source. So in that, let's say that time is T2 minus T1. So within T2 minus T1, this aircraft is moving at a speed VA. It travels to the next location, and that is over here. Now at, at that uh, instant, uh, at time T2, the next laser beam is fired and it is, it is hitting point P2 and you calculate the coordinate system. You, you calculate the coordinate of point P2 in a different coordinate system. Same thing happened with when you mount this LIDAR, uh, this, uh, LIDAR system over the uh, moving vehicle. Okay. So the coordinate system, uh, if you, it is if in case of tripod mounted static LIDAR, the coordinate system doesn't change during the scanning from a fixed station. But if you mount it on the moving platform, then the internal coordinate system, the internal coordinate system of LIDAR keeps on changing with the, uh, with the movement of uh, platform where it is mounted. So what is, what additional sensor units are required in addition with the laser scanner unit when you mount when you when you perform when you want to perform the laser scanning through mobile either airborne or vehicle based platform okay so what we need to do so ultimately our goal is to uh, the raw measurement which are recorded from p1 and p2 in the internal coordinate system of laser scanner okay and obviously at uh, t1 and uh, at uh, time t1 and t2 they are at the different location so we need to uh, add uh, a sensor unit okay that can able to track the movement of this laser scanner unit. Okay, and uh, the additional sensor which we are selecting, that sensor should measure the coordinate or change in the position of laser scanner in a fixed coordinate system. So we need to consider uh, over here to understand this entire process, a uh, one coordinate system that is associated with the laser scanner unit uh, that, that you already know. In addition with that, we need to have a multiple coordinate systems, okay, which are further assisting, are, uh, we, which are of, uh, in which uh, we are calculating the changes in the, in the coordinate system of, in an in a internal coordinate system of laser scanner. So as you see over here at time T1, okay, a raw measurement is recorded by this laser scanner unit, okay, in its internal coordinate system. Fine. 
so uh, the this let's say if we consider the origin location is o over here so this vector op1 op1 vector tells us uh, it is calculated using the ra measurement that is computed uh, by the laser scanner unit at time t1 so this op1 vector is calculated by using the range that is calculated at time t1 angle alpha 1 and beta 1 okay so in in the internal coordinate system of laser scanner unit at time t1 the op1 vector is calculated okay and obviously if it is a vector analysis then mod op1 if you take modulus of this op1 at time t1 so this is equal to range r1 that is a distance between laser source to target point p1 okay now our ultimate goal is to transform the uh, to transform the coordinate of point p1 and p2 from dynamic coordinate system that is an internal coordinate system of laser scanner unit to a externally defined static coordinate system okay so that uh, externally defined coordinate system could be ground based it could be uh, defined with respect to the earth okay so the defini uh, how we define an external coordinate system in which we are going to transform the coordinate of p1 and p2 it is ultimately decided by the additional sensor unit which we are combining to the laser scanner unit okay so so uh, the additional sensor unit what is the task of additional sensor unit to track the change in the coordinate system of laser scanner unit okay so additional sensors which are required in this case are the gnss global navigation satellite system that is gps over here and inertial measurement unit imu okay so uh, when you integrate the gps and imu it is called as positioning and orientation system so what this does it calculate the trajectory information of the moving platform okay or ultimately you can get information about how the coordinate system of how the internal coordinate system of laser scanner unit is changing so change in terms of orientation of axis like how x y z axis orientations are changing and how its uh, origin o is changing okay so origin o indicate how the position of this coordinate system changes as well as orientation indicate how the direction of x y z axis are changing okay and we select earth as a reference to define a externally uh, external coordinate system and uh, it is selected as coordinate system used by the gps okay so gps coordinate system is defined in wgs 34 so it is a global coordinate system so uh, we have defined a external uh, a external coordinate system that is a wgs 84 over here it is defined with respect to earth and you are already aware about uh, how to define it how to define it it means where is the origin of this coordinate system what are the reference directions of various axes like x y and z okay so uh, a reference coordinate system Uh, it is required and it should be static that we have already selected over here based on the uh, additional sensor component which we are using so when we are using gps so gps coordinate system is in wgs 84 so mobile lidar operation needs laser scanner and positioning and orientation system so when you are going to operate uh, when you are going to perform the laser scanning through the mobile platform so there is a requirement of positioning and orientation system as a, as an additional uh, sensor assembly and it is integrated with the laser scanner unit 
and though the externally uh, the external coordinate system is selected at wgs84 so it's a direct geo referencing means all target points coordinates you are already calculating in a globally defined coordinate system so no need to be uh, no need to go with the post processing it's a direct measurement it's a direct geo referencing where the each point coordinate is computed in wgs84 so we select it over here the gps coordinate system uh, okay so uh, uh, in this process if you see how we can uh, let's say uh, by using a pos unit if you can able to track the changes in the uh, laser scanner coordinate system so how that can help you to trans to actual cal uh, to calculate the point p1 and p2 coordinate in uh, this uh, external coordinate system over here okay so if we apply a concept of uh, vector algebra over here so the vector op1 is already calculated uh, it is measured in a internal coordinate system of laser scanner unit and uh, this uh, the location of uh, laser scanner unit uh, the laser scanner coordinate origin and the external coordinates that is a reference coordinate system origin uh, it is already measured it is measured by the pos unit so o reference o it is recorded okay though it is not directly calculated uh, uh, there is a certain different provision but for the understanding point of view i am just simplifying over here let's say uh, by using a pos unit we can able to track the change in origin of uh, laser scanner coordinate system that is xyz okay so it means if change is tracked so uh, this uh, vector o reference that is origin of a reference coordinate system to origin of laser scanner coordinate system it is measured okay and then after that uh, the point p1 coordinate in a Uh, reference coordinate system if you see this vector o reference p1 and t at time t1 it can it is equal to o reference o vector and op1 vector this vector addition can be only performed when all the vectors are in a same coordinate system uh, is this true over here the vector o reference p1 o reference o and op1 all these vector components are in a same coordinate system are they are they are recorded in a different coordinate system can anyone join discussion with me is this uh, if i say op1 in a in instrument in a laser scanner coordinate system then uh, these two vectors are already over there we are, i have already defined it is this uh, is this true uh, this equation Uh, sir, I'm not understanding your question, sir. Please, uh, can you one more time speak? Uh, see, um, uh, because uh, uh, the discussion has been already done. So, where where is the confusion? Like, uh, is it clear to you, all of you? Yes, this thing is clear. But what you are asking that I'm uh, asking, sir. Please, can you one more time uh, ask? Okay, what okay. You okay uh, let me further clarify it uh in vector algebra when we are going to add multiple vectors or we are going to add two vector okay so vector addition can only perform when all the vectors are in a same coordinate system is it fine so uh, that is a concept from vector algebra side what i am doing over here like this vector o reference p1 that is our aim this we want to calculate we want to transform all the points like p1 p2 and other points in a reference coordinate system that is static and why we are doing it 
we have already discussed previously like when all these points coordinate are calculated by the calculated in a internal in a instrument coordinate system or in a laser scanner coordinate system then that the the coordinate of laser scanner is dynamic over here so the data if you visualize it it looks like noise because these points are uh, are being collected in a different coordinate system so to get actual structure of the object all the points should be recorded in same coordinate system okay so uh, uh, to uh, employ this concept over here what we have done we have uh, uh, we have added positioning and orientation system with the laser scanner unit so that uh, all the measurements of p1 p2 and other points which are recorded in a laser scanner coordinate system can be transformed from laser scanner coordinate system to a externally defined that is uh, wgs34 a reference coordinate system that is not going to be changed with respect to time okay so uh, what what i have done this vector op1 i'm i'm saying that this vector op1 is in kindly correct me the vector op1 is in laser scanner coordinate system fine now vector o reference this vector i am talking about this vector o reference o1 is in a reference coordinate system and vector o reference to p1 is again in a reference coordinate system and i have written this equation is this correct or if it, if it is not correct then what modification has to be done sir uh, it is correct sir Sir, it is correct in the same way. Like uh, when we were in class 11, 12, we, what we used to do that uh, river boat problem. We used to uh, relate our velocity with the still water, and still water velocity used to relate it with the earth. So in the same way, uh, we can relate it that like uh, the reference system of this uh, point with respect to this uh, laser system, and then uh, we have already referenced uh, the coordinate system of the laser system with the referenced system. So at the last, we will get the uh, uh, reference uh, O reference P1 in the same coordinate system. Uh, OK, see one modification has to be done in this case. This O P1 vector should be in a reference coordinate system. Then only the vector addition can be performed. OK. Like this OP1, if it is in a laser scanner coordinate system and other two vectors are in a reference coordinate system. So these two vectors are in the same coordinate system while the third vector is in a laser scanner coordinate system. So this vector addition cannot be performed. So before performing this vector addition, what you need to do, you need to change this uh, OP1 vector that is that is uh, a vector that is connecting the origin of uh, laser scanner to point p1 and that vector you will get using this ra information r1 alpha 1 and beta 1 okay so using this ra information r1 alpha 1 and beta 1 you can generate a vector that gives you the uh, by connecting this origin of this uh, uh, laser scanner coordinate system to P1. Okay, so that has to be further changed. This vector has to be changed in a reference coordinate system. And this can be done if uh, the orientation between the Z reference and Z of the laser scanner system is known. We'll discuss it in detail later on. So when this, uh, uh, what is a misalignment of the axis of a reference coordinate system and laser scanner coordinate system? If that angle deviation information is known to you and it is calculated uh, uh, it is calculated by using a sensor like inertial measurement unit. Okay. 
so so what happens by using that information you can able to transform this uh, the vector connecting o to p1 from laser scanner coordinate system to reference coordinate system so actually this vector o p1 is uh, is also in a reference coordinate system but it the information is measured from o to p1 like if i i further uh, uh, draw a few uh, additional figure over here so what i mean to say we have a point p1 over here and uh, this is the laser scanner unit and the reference coordinate system is defined with respect to earth fine so uh, what happens this laser beam is fired and the information r1 alpha 1 beta 1 this information is recorded okay and uh, using this information you can able to measure vector o p1 okay but this vector is in laser scanner coordinate system okay now for the if you see this uh, the direction of axis is over here so this is x y and z here we have x reference Z reference. Okay. So what we need to do is vector O P one. Okay. This vector O P one is in X Y Z coordinate system. it is defined over here you need to rotate it such that you need to rotate the coordinate system that is x y z such that the coordinate system matches with the reference coordinate system so rotation should be performed like sir whatever you are uh, making that is not being displayed only uh... Uh, one coordinate system and p1 is being written on the on that you know whiteboard uh, okay let me check thank you uh, let me just see okay all of you could you see the screen that the writing board i have shared with you Yes, sir. That is being shared. No, is it for all of you? Is it not visible at your end? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, uh, is it visible to you, or you you can't see the screen that I have shared with you? Sir, visible. sir, it is visible. Ah, huh, then it is, it is fine. Well. Okay, please let me know if there is any interruption. So then uh, we'll we'll see that. Ah, uh, okay. So what you need to do, ah, uh, the laser scanner coordinate system that is defined by the axis x y z. 
okay and the vector op1 it is calculated it is calculated using the raw information alpha1 r1 alpha1 and beta1 fine and this we have already discussed how it is calculated so vector op1 is known and this vector op1 Sir, is is the par... hello Sir, vector oh, is yeah. not visible. Huh. Sir, only uh, sir, only one coordinate is. Ah, uh, okay. Let me say it again. Uh, okay now now tell me yes and now okay sir uh, fine yes sir so uh, again i would like to brief uh, the discussion we are doing so in a laser scanner coordinate system that is defined by x y z uh, okay so i have written x y z can you see that on the screen yes, yes sir. sir okay fine so uh, in a laser scanner coordinate system the vector op1 is first calculated using the raw information alpha1 this range r1 alpha1 and beta1 fine but our aim is to transform this vector op1 from laser scanner coordinate system to externally defined reference coordinate system and why it is required i have already discussed previously like when we are going to perform the vector addition using two vectors then both vectors should be in a same coordinate system so what is our objective is to transform the vector op1 now from the laser scanner that is xyz coordinate system to reference coordinate system so what you need to do over here you need to rotate vector op1 we'll see later on uh, how this rotation is performed and how this rotation provide uh, that uh, how is this rotation uh, help you to change the vector op1 from a uh, laser scanner coordinate system to the reference coordinate system so a uh, z reference and again uh, you need to change the y axis of a laser scanner unit from y to over here this y reference will be somewhere over here okay uh, we need to map it in this way so just assume that this is some some uh, tilt is there and this is a z reference okay and uh, uh this is the x reference this will be now y reference okay and the third axis this will be this will be the x reference okay so uh you can see that uh Uh, by calculating the difference between the axes in terms of their angular separation so you need to calculate what is the difference between the angular separation of z and z reference as you see over here what is the angular separation of y and y reference similarly what is the angular separation of x and x reference and the uh, the angular deviations they are recorded by the imu inertial measurement unit okay do inertial measurement unit is meant to calculate the angular uh, deviations in a different coordinate system that is a kind of a bit complex system but for the understanding only just you need to assume that the deviation between z and z reference uh, x and x reference y and y reference is estimated by imu and once you know these angles so once you know this deviation angles by rotating the coordinate op1 using these deviation angles 
you can transform vector op1 from a laser scanner coordinate system to the reference coordinate system okay to one particular example i will further clarify this concept okay uh, by 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 analyzing the rotation in two dimension okay so now by using the concept of angular deviations between the reference coordinate system and laser scanner coordinate system in the previous case that uh, uh, over here now this vector op1 is in a reference coordinate system and these two vectors are already there this o reference o1 is already in a reference coordinate system that is computed by gps unit so once you are adding these two vectors which are in a reference coordinate system so obviously the resultant will be in the same coordinate system reference coordinate system and that is our objective okay so when we operate a laser scanner unit uh, through the mobile platform uh, so the all the computations should be done in a external uh, reference coordinate system that is defined over here with respect to the coordinate system used by the additional sensors so we choose over here the coordinate system of gps okay imu gives us the information about the changes in the uh, orientation of axis between the reference coordinate system and laser scanner coordinate system okay so this uh, these additional steps has to be performed so it's not like when we are in case of tls I, 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 as you see we have discussed over here in the very first slide uh, in this presentation so uh, as you see over here the point p1 coordinate is calculated in xyz coordinate system by measuring the range r alpha and beta only okay and we can locate point p1 so this this, this is uh, this concept can be directly applicable when we are operating the lidar system to the static platform okay once you operate it to the mobile
okay uh, sorry there, there was some interruption so uh so till till where uh, you could hear uh, in the uh, could anyone confirm like uh, could you get this discussion at your end the slide number 41 no sir uh, last we heard sir from uh, till where you explained about that relationship that vector one uh fine so uh i hope th uh, there is no confusion in this uh, equation okay uh, because uh, this is the important part uh, where uh, we have established the relationship to which a point a particular point coordinate can be transformed from a laser scanner coordinate system that is static to a dynamic uh, that is dynamic sorry to a static coordinate system that is defined externally okay Uh, now, uh, uh, if you see over here, uh, so uh, when we are going to perform laser scanning through the mobile platform, uh, it is either aircraft based or vehicle based. Then, in that case, the requirement will be in addition with the laser scanner unit, you need to integrate with the POS. Okay. and this positioning and orientation system is comprised uh, uh by combining the gps and imu or ins unit okay so the gps unit continuously track the location of uh, flying aircraft in this case as you see in the figure this aircraft is moving and continuously the laser, there is a laser source it is firing the laser beam towards ground okay so the role of gps unit is to track the coordinate of moving move, moving platform and we have a imu unit imu unit calculate the angular deviation of a flying aircraft the entire platform with respect to a particular fixed coordinate system okay so if you try to correlate with our discussion over here okay so in this case you can see that uh, the requirement when we are going to transform a point p1 in a reference coordinate system uh, we have already established the requirement like uh, the laser scanner coordinate system origin should be calculated in a reference coordinate system so this calculation is done using gps okay additionally uh, if you see over here the difference or uh, you can say the deviation between the axis of laser scanner coordinate system to the axis of reference coordinate system is measured by imu unit okay so uh, though it is uh, the the role of imu is not like that but for the general understanding you can assume that uh, like the angular differences between the two coordinate systems okay can be measured by the imu because see actually this uh, omega phi and kappa these are the angles okay which are recorded by imu and they gives you the information of how the axis how a coordinate system which is defined uh, this uh, aircraft on board like if you you have mounted a laser scanner unit over here okay so how the coordinate of laser scanner unit because see if the aircraft rotate then obviously the coordinate of laser scanner unit changes okay so the change is recorded by imu unit okay and this change generally the reference coordinate system we use that is a static coordinate so x y z that is how the aircraft is moving as well as the omega phi kappa this information are sufficient to transform a point let's say if point p1 on the earth surface to transform the coordinate of point p1 from a laser scanner coordinate system at that particular epoch to the 
externally defined reference system in terms of x y z okay so it means if there is no availability of gps and imu so this can't be done so this was the problem in 70s and 80s like due to unavailability of the required sensors the lidar principle that laser scanner through the state uh, through the mobile platform was not realized okay so the, the, there was a difficulty to implement it at that time so as you see in the figure like gps is one of the sensor unit that is integrated satellite on uh, this uh, aircraft on board with uh, in addition with the laser scanner unit and imu so uh, is there any query please let me know सर जो आपने आईएमयू फंक्शन बताया है तो सर इसकी कोई रेंज होती है सर एंगल में सी रेंज में इट इफ यू सी द एंगल विल बी फ्रॉम व्हाट इफ वी इफ यू सी द क्वाड्रेंट सिस्टम सो वी हैव फर्स्ट क्वाड्रेंट सेकंड थर्ड एंड फोर्थ ओके एंड इफ वी इफ वी टेक द रेफरेंस लेट्स से दिस इज द रेफरेंस लाइन and this reference line you are using to measure the angle and the target line it is somewhere here okay and the measurement is performed counter clockwise what will be what will be the angular separation the maximum could be 360 degree it all depends on like what is a reference direction we are assuming so with respect to this reference direction okay imu sensor is measuring the direction of uh, the target axis you can say okay and if uh, if it is designated to measure in counter clockwise so this will be the angle uh fine so further in our discussion if you see uh, if we simplify the various components then uh, they are mainly the laser scanner unit so laser laser scanner unit is comprised of laser transmitter and laser receiver with respect and deflection unit and we have a dgps unit we have ins unit ins unit gives us the angles okay and finally we have a centralized control centralized control and data recording unit so this data recording unit uh, collect data from the individual sensors okay and finally those datas are combined together to geolocate a point let's say somewhere here we have a point p1 so corresponding to the point p1 observation what is happening just see there are multiple sensors and they are recording their own uh, data so let's say at time t1 corresponding to point p1 a laser scanner unit that is comprised of transmitter receiver and deflection unit record range of Uh, that is a distance of point p1 from the laser source and one angle alpha one here we use 2d laser scanner like in tls we talk about uh, 3d lidar okay 3d laser scanner unit where two angles are calculated while when we operate uh, when we perform a laser scanning from a mob through mobile platform so in that case instead of 2d laser scanner we use uh, instead of 3d laser scanner we use 2d laser scanner and we operate it in profile mode uh, i will discuss okay so just uh, uh, for the general understanding you need to remember that uh, in a mobile uh, lidar operation we use 2d laser scanner so meaning of 2d is 
it just fire the laser beam in one one plane like uh, uh this is uh, if we define a plane and somewhere we have so laser beam is fired in only one plane the laser beam is fired so if if it is fired in only one plane so what we measure we measure a range from laser source and from a reference direction let's say this is the reference direction we you assume so what is the deviation from this reference direction so there will be additional angle how this 2d lidar is uh, converting information into 3d what happened the movement of laser scanner unit provides the third dimension now like after some time uh, the first plane moves to the next location so in a new plane you are calculating all the information uh, we'll discuss it in detail so at t1 the range r1 and alpha1 is recorded at the same way it is recorded by laser scanner unit then we have a dgps unit so dgps unit record coordinate of a flying aircraft where it is from where this laser beam is fired that coordinate is recorded then we have imu unit IMU R I N S. Then uh, the angles are recorded. That omega phi and and all these informations are recorded in the internal memory of these uh, systems. Okay, which are further fetched by the data recording and control centralized unit. okay and at time t1 only all these uh, individual sensor data are processed together okay and that workflow you can see in this uh, in this block diagram okay so the recording that is done by the laser scanner unit that is data recorded by laser scanner unit then the angles are recorded by uh, inertial navigation system then dgps record the aircraft trajectory okay and actually this information this trajectory is combined this information is also there okay and uh, this laser scanner gives us the range data and there are some calibration parameter as well so they are the lidar to aircraft mounting parameters we will discuss about them and actually they are required when the placement of these uh, individual sensors are different like how they are placed on the basis of their placement we need to calculate certain aircraft mounting parameters and they are combined in a processing software to generate a geolocated coordinate of a ground point okay so uh, i am giving you 5 minutes time uh, please uh, go go through the discussion we had okay and we'll again revisit uh, after 5 minutes to to discuss on the queries if uh, there will be any query
uh, okay so uh, ultimately our aim is to uh, uh, in when we perform a laser scanning from a mo uh, moving platform our aim is to calculate a point coordinate uh, in a static coordinate system so that the entire structure of the object can be formed okay so uh, to obtain this uh, requirement uh, as we have discussed previously uh, with reference to the laser scanning operation from a static platform like in case of terrestrial laser scanning okay when we want to transform it uh, to the mobile platform then in that case we need to require the additional sensors that is gps and ins both okay and uh, the gps does measurement in its own uh, reference system in, in, in uh, and it is recorded uh, internally uh, in a gps receiver and we have a imu unit it also does the measurement in its own uh, coordinate system and in, in uh, it is recorded internally and further the laser scanner unit in case of uh, mobile uh, operation the laser scanner we have a 2d laser scanner so its measurement is also recorded in its own uh, memory so all these informations are fetch collect uh, the, they, they are fetch through a controlling unit and and further they are processed by a software this entire process is called a geolocation okay so ge uh, the all the steps of geolocation is uh, coded uh, in a particular coding platform and that processing the resultant processing software uh, calculate a coordinate of a target point in a global coordinate system So uh, this is all about uh, why we uh, all about uh, mobile laser scanning. Uh, uh, the laser scanning when we perform through the mobile platform. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Tell me uh, if uh, we apply a modification. If we do not use a IMU unit, then what will happen? With reference to this discussion, let's say I'm skipping that mobile, this IMU unit is not integrated with the, in the POS unit. Okay. So what will be the problem? सर ये वेक्टर इक्वेशन जो आपने बनाया है ये सही से अप्लाई नहीं हो पाएगा क्योंकि जो थर्ड पॉइंट जो पॉइंट है हम लास्ट वाला ओ पी वन जो लिख रहे हैं सर ये दैट विल नॉट बी विद कंजंक्शन ऑफ ऑल अदर टू पैरामीटर्स दैट विल नॉट बी विद रेफरेंस टू विद अलाइनमेंट ऑफ द रेफरेंस कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम ओके सो इफ IMU will not be there. Then the discussion which we are talking about now, uh, this this one, uh, OP1. So the transformation of vector OP1 from a laser scanner coordinate system that that is x y z to a reference coordinate system can't be done because for applying this transformation, as you see uh, here. the op1 vector first it has to be transformed from a from a reference that is a, a laser scanner reference system to the uh, externally defined reference system okay so this op uh, op1 vector has to be transformed and to transform this vector these uh, angular deviations from the coordinate system that is a reference coordinate system and laser scanner coordinate system has to be calculated and it is calculated by the IMU okay so if it it will not be there 
then there will be problem at this stage. This transformation cannot be done. What will happen if we don't have a GPS unit? If we don't have a GPS unit, then the trajectory, how that uh, origin O of a laser scanner coordinate system is moving, that movement cannot be tracked. So uh, I was discussing in the next lecture, uh, like uh, if you see in a laser scanner unit, we have a various electronic component. Like we have a laser source, we have a receiver unit, we have a timer circuit, there is an angle encoder. So we'll see the uh, working of uh, each unit. Like specifically, we'll discuss in more detail about uh, when we talk about a laser source, then what should be the property of laser, laser beam that is that is generated from the laser uh, laser transmitter okay and we'll we'll try to understand like if we are saying that laser beam should be monochromatic so why it is so so based on the requirement in terms of very accurate measurement of range and coordinate we'll establish the requirement okay so we'll see what should be the uh, property of laser pulse Okay, then after that, we'll try to analyze when laser beam is transmitted from the laser source, when it goes to the medium, finally it hit the target, then what happens at each stage? Like in a remote sensing course, we discussed about uh, how that uh, external energy source sun radiates the energy, it passes through the medium, finally interact with the target, reflected back and it is sensed at the receiver, or sensed at the sensor end. In the same way, and there we discuss about the property of radiation and how it interacts with the medium, what changes occurred. Okay. So in the same way, we'll have discussion with respect to the laser beam that is generated from the laser source. Okay. Then after that, we will we'll have discussion on the various uh, geometrical parameters. Like what should be the, if we talk about uh, time uh, pulse laser, then what should be the frequency of pulse laser? What should be the time period? Okay, what is the length? What is the pulse length? Okay, so all discussion will do uh, with respect to the uh, each unit that we incorporate to realize the concept of laser scanning from the mobile platform. Okay. 
so in this lecture we have discussed uh, uh, an overview about what is the requirement uh, for the laser scanning to the mobile platform okay how it is different how it is different from the static laser scanning uh, operation okay uh, what is the working of additional components which we combine with the laser scanner unit what happen if we don't use imu what is the role of imu there what is the role of gps over there okay how in a vector algebra we can perform uh, we can perform a vector addition okay so there we have seen that all the measurement we can perform vector addition when all the measurements all the vectors are in the same coordinate system so by using this concept how much changes are required that we have discussed okay so uh, i ask you to kindly go through the discussion in detail so that at least you have idea about entire process you have a kind of overview okay now we will further narrow down our discussion to the to the individual concepts so in the next lecture we are going to talk about uh, requirement uh, for the laser beam then we'll discuss about uh, what is the effect of laser pulse firing rate in case of pulse laser okay and uh, single pulse laser multi pulse laser that concept we'll discuss so uh, for today's discussion uh, uh, i have uh, already covered the the required content so now i'm going to stop my discussion over here we'll meet in the next week uh, and we'll discuss the content that i have uh, shared with you okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.